Thank you for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields on this Friday. Thank you for taking the time to share this channel, subscribe to this channel, and like these videos. I see it. I appreciate it. This channel is for you. Now let's get right to it. Here's the Caribbean, the Atlantic. Here's Florida. And you see here again, this spin out here. I do believe that'll become a tropical storm, but I do not believe that is just going to take a line right into the Caribbean. I like to lead with good news when I can, especially throughout the hurricane season. I do see this making a curve. I want to show you the computer models, why it is going to make a curve, and I want to show you the wind field. Also, I want to show you another big tropical wave out there. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, so here's the dry air. There's not as much now. This orange shading is the dry air. That helps keep things kind of slow to develop. But at ahead of this, there's a little more moisture overall over here. Not as much dry air where it's headed. That's going to allow it to develop some. It needs a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, and it's going to have that. Even the Hurricane Center saying, hey, this has a good shot of developing. There's also a little spin here back to Toward Florida and Georgia. Not expecting any development out of that, but bringing some additional rain. And then this spot here, I want to get to this, a big blob of rain with a strong tropical wave in the Western Caribbean and Central America. I'm going to cover that as well. I'll dive into that in a second, but look at this. Look what's going on here. So this is later today. This is the American model, and the models have been in pretty good agreement as a whole, especially with the track, which is super important. By the time we work our way into Sunday, let me stop it here. On Sunday, that's when it could spin up into a tropical depression or a tropical storm. But here's the Caribbean. Through the weekend, as you watch my videos and forecasts, we're going to start to see it making that tur turn to the northwest. That will give you some ease, some confidence that, yeah, the forecast is on track. And then eventually, by Monday, it's going to work its way to the northeast of the Caribbean. Again, not plowing into the Caribbean, to the northeast of the Caribbean, not coming to Puerto Rico, for example. With it up here, though, that is going to draw in more moisture some indirect effects with some increased rain Sunday into Monday in the Eastern Caribbean. Then down the road, watching Bermuda right here. Again, it should stay to the east of Bermuda. Boy, if we could get all the systems to do this this season, that would be a great thing. But as of now, again, staying to the east, which would be some good news. And then down the road, hopefully to the east of the Atlantic region of Canada. Got my eye on Canada as well. But I want, I want to get into that further, the steering conditions in a moment. Let me get to this. Here's the European model, again, right here. Now we've got the big blue age. Uh, just to the north of it. That's a blocker. So this system can't go right to the north, at least as of now. But look what happens as we go out in time. So here's the Caribbean. Here are the Bahamas right here, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. As we go out in time, this area of high pressure, not the strongest, and it just nudges a little bit off to the east. That is huge. As this little blocker slides to the east and this moves more to the west, that gives it a window to make its way back to the north and make that turn so, so critical. So again, little slide to the east, that allows this to move and kind of make its way back to the northwest and then eventually to the north. This is by the time we get into Sunday morning. Should still be uh, kind of just a strong tropical wave at that point. After that, it may develop. There's that area of high pressure off to the east. So again, watching this, we've got the flow around the area of high pressure. You get a clockwise flow, so that will allow this thing to kind of just curve around the western side of that area of high pressure. Not only do we have that, but there's a little system right through here, kind of a trough or a front through here, that protects the United States and the east coast of the U.S. and keeps this off to the east. So all of that allows it to make that very, very important turn. Now, let me show you the wind field on this, okay? So we get a look at the winds. Here we are in the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, southeast U.S. right here. You can see it by the time we get into Saturday, some of the winds, 56 kilometers an hour or 35 miles per hour or some of the gusts to that. So starting to take shape into a tropical depression or a tropical storm, more of a center forming on this. But this is still a good uh, measure away from the Caribbean. That is huge. Again, it's not going to trek its way right through the Caribbean. I showed you the computer models, the big ones all in agreement, and I showed you again why it would make that curve. You see the white shading showing up though. Those would be winds 80 kilometers an hour or 50 miles per hour. Got kilometers an hour and miles per hour on there for you. So again, strengthening as it gets closer to Bermuda, 
but it should be just to the east of Bermuda. Even if it gets close to Bermuda, this will be a lopsided system. Here's the center with the strongest winds to the east of the center of this. And then I'll keep an eye on Canada down the road. So we've got the front or trough here. High pressure, as I showed you, nudges off to the east. That gives it that window to make that curve. Now, of course, weather does change. I will watch out for any changes whatsoever. If anything crazy changes, I'll let you know. But again, it's very much uh, locked in. I showed you all of the models, the steering conditions, and what we're seeing out there right now. So as you watch my videos through the weekend, we'll be seeing that making its curve. Next name on the list is Emily. I do believe this will get a name. Next name being Emily, we just had Don. So Tropical Storm Emily will be the next name. Now look at this big blob catching your eye right here. This is almost exactly what I was showing you with the forecast yesterday. Honduras, Nicaragua, we've got some flooding. I'll get to the rain totals in a second. Now, this is the tropical wave that moved all the way through the Caribbean. As it gets into the Pacific side, what is very interesting is it's actually going to cross over Central America, get into the Pacific, and it could develop. Now, it didn't get a name over here. It's not a classified system in the Caribbean and the Atlantic Basin. So once it gets into the Pacific side, it'll take on a name for the east. Eastern Pacific, different sets of names, Eastern Pacific versus the Atlantic Basin. Again, if that becomes a name system over there, but lots of heavy rain th here through Honduras and Nicaragua. And again, as we worked our way up into, uh, let me jump back real quickly. I don't want to forget this. Again, this spin up here by Florida, the heavy rain we had in parts of the Bahamas, that's kind of lifting up toward Georgia, not seeing any signs of development, but there is a kind of healthy spin up there drawing some moisture. I didn't want to skip ahead on that. Wanted to get back to that for the Southeast U.S. But there's that blob that I'm watching right there. It did bring some showers to Jamaica yesterday and last night. Falmouth, for example, we had a few showers. So there's the rain and that flood potential with that strong tropical wave moving into Central America. And that over there, the leading edge of that next tropical wave. Taking you out in time, spotty showers and storms today. I'll cover that further in the forecast in just a second. We see the green hit or miss showers and thunderstorms. The brighter color showing the areas of heavier rain. Look at tomorrow. As we work our way into Saturday, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, a high chance of rain, especially southern Belize, not as much to the north, but southern Belize, Yucatan, not a lot of action, but in here that flood threat, and then again watching that, that developing system approaching the Caribbean, but you could even see here as we work our way into late Sunday how it makes that curve, but as it kind of lifts up to the north, it draws in more moisture, Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, Venezuela, we'll see that rain chance picking up again. It's going to stay active as a whole in the Eastern Caribbean, but again, the strongest weather with that developing system stays offshore. Now, as far as rain totals go, lots of blue in here. If you get some rain, not all of us will, 25 millimeters or an inch of rain in some spots. But this is the big issue, again, as we get back toward uh, Central America, parts of Honduras, Nicaragua. Colors are off the chart. We could see some spots in Nicaragua and Honduras, over 150 millimeters of rain or over six inches of rain, and that is going to lead to life-threatening flash flooding in parts of Honduras, Nicaragua, watching Guatemala, El Salvador as well, even Costa Rica, for that flood potential across Central America. Now, there's that strong tropical wave right there. Again, once it gets into the eastern Pacific, uh, it could flare up into a name system over on that side. So Belize, rain chance holding at about 50%. Again, southern Belize, better chance of getting some rain the next couple days. Spotty showers and storms nearby Jamaica today uh, nearby the Cayman Islands. Keep me posted if you get a couple of those. Otherwise, the rain chance down the road dropping off. Bahamas, about a 30 to 40 percent chance of some rain and thunderstorms today. Turks and Caicos today and tomorrow. Rain chance is at 40 percent. St. Lucia, man, I jumped ahead again a little bit too quickly on that. Watch it covered in St. Lucia. Scattered showers and storms. With that system lifting to the north, that will draw in a little moisture. So again, keeping things active as a whole. No all-day washout. Same thing, Trinidad and Tobago, 60% chance of some rain. Uh, Dominica, 30% chance Saturday, 40% chance Sunday as we work our way into Grenada. So again, St. Lucia, my good friends in Barbados, again, scattered showers and storms the next few days. Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you see the rain chance kind of bouncing around, but elevated a 60% chance tomorrow. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, passing showers and storms today, Guadeloupe and uh, Martinique, 40% chance though by the time we get into Sunday, could be a little higher on Monday. Passing shower storm possible 
Puerto Rico over the next three days. U.S. Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands, isolated. Rain chance 30% as we get through the weekend. 50% chance tomorrow in the Dominican Republic. Haiti holding at a 40% chance as we go over the next three days. And as we get back toward Aruba, we need some rain. Rain chance very limited. 10, 20% chance. Same thing, Curacao and Bonaire. 20% chance as we get into the weekend. St. Kitts and Nevis, rain chance isolated. 30% chance today, tomorrow, and Sunday. 20 to 30 percent chance. Antigua, Barbuda, of course, watching that tropical system offshore very carefully. Same thing. And Anguilla, rain chance 30 percent as we get into the weekend, a bit higher on Monday. St. Martin, Saba, Stacia, rain chance 20 to 30 percent uh, today through the weekend. Costa Rica, though, that high chance of rain. I mentioned the flood potential. Costa Rica, we'll see scattered storms as well in Panama, but Costa Rica to the north through Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala. That's where we have the very serious flood threat. Northern Venezuela, our weekend rain chance running at 40%. Guyana, 40% chance today, a 60% chance tomorrow, and a 40 to 50% chance through the weekend through Suriname. So again, lots going on, watching that tropical wave in the Atlantic developing. I believe that'll become Emily. I'll monitor how close it gets over the next few days. I am expecting it to curve, but again, always watching for any changes. Most active time of the hurricane season, right around the corner, August, September, and October. Hurricane season goes all the way through the end of November. So please keep me posted on what you got going on. I've got my eye on this thing 24-7, watching it develop in the Atlantic, and uh, thinking of you if you're dealing with the flooding in Central America. Please stay safe. Have a good rest of your day.